Um, before we begin, let's talk for a second. Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> I'd like to welcome you guys here. Many of you probably have no idea what this is, so let's get started with that real quick. I am here today with a special developer stream of a game called Pantheon. Pantheon Rise of the Fallen is a new MMO coming out uh, at some point in the future. It is currently in pre-alpha, and today we're going to be playing with five of the developers from the studio um, to, well, basically show how much progress has been made. Uh, today we're going to be fighting through a dungeon, and uh, yeah, should be a lot of fun. Real quick, before I continue, I do want to make a couple things super clear. Um, I am playing this as a fan. I am a huge EverQuest 1 player. This game is is not really a spiritual successor to EQ1, but it is a game that is based more on the classical older styles, which is one of the reasons I'm super, super hyped for it, because there's not a lot of MMOs like this that have come out in the last couple decades at this point. So uh, yeah, really enjoying it. Um, this is not a paid promotion of any kind. This is me hanging out with the devs and just playing and having a good time. And uh, really, on that note, that's uh, that's about it. So. Without further delay, uh, let's go ahead and introduce Ben, who is going to be introducing the rest of the team, and he's going to let us know who we're going to be playing with today. So, Ben, take hey it guys. away. Thanks, Co. I'm glad to be here again. I'm Ben Dean, as Co. mentioned. I am one of the game's producers and the director of communication. And with me are a few people, some you'll recognize, and a few new faces as well. We've got our chief creative officer, Brad McQuaid. Hey guys, uh, very happy to be here. Today we're doing one of my favorite things, the classic dungeon crawl. So glad you guys could be here, appreciate your attendance. And without further ado, Chris Perkins. Hey everybody, Chris Perkins. You guys may know me as Joppa, creative director and lead game designer. Um, I feel like it's been a while since we've done one of these, so I'm excited to be back, show off the zone, show off a lot of the progress we've made. And I'm also excited to have um, two of our, our new people here with us, not new to the team, but new to the stream. And we'll start with uh, Mr. Tim Wathen, our one of our game designers. Real quick, while we're doing this, do you guys want to uh, say what classes you'll be playing as well? Mm. Yeah, so this is Ben Dean again. I'm playing the, what am I playing? I'm playing <laughs> the, the mm. warrior. I'll be the tonight's tank, this afternoon's tank. I'm also playing a warrior, um, and I'm off tank because they won't let me be the primary tank. <laughs> <laughs> for probably for good reason. We it just trivializes the content, Brad, when you're, <laughs> when you're the main tank. There's just no tension. Uh, uh, Joppa here, I'll be playing the, the cleric. And hey, everyone, this is uh, Tim Wathen, uh, also known as Convo in the community. Um, I'll be playing a wizard today. And uh, I'm going to pass it on to Kim Morrison, who is our lead tester, and she definitely helps with a lot of the game design, too. Uh, hey, everyone. I'm happy to be here. This is my first stream uh, with the team. I'll be playing the Enchanter today, so I'll be uh, nuking and providing, hopefully, some mana to everyone. And, uh, yeah, thank you. Keeping things Excellent. mezzed. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mez, big time. Good. Thank you, guys. So shall we get started? Oh, yes. So today, as mentioned, we're going to do things. OK, I've got two incoming, I think. Uh, I'm taking this first one, this front one. Um, we're going to do things a little bit differently than we have in the past. We just kind of wanted to show you the real gameplay. Uh, so it's all going to be about the group today. Uh, we are doing this on a live pre-alpha server. So we may be running into other groups. I hope we're running into right. players in Okay, thanks. Swing it off a bit. Oh, did somebody break the magic? No. Alright. Taunt! Here we go. So, so, um, sorry, go ahead, Co. Oh, I was gonna say, so uh, I know we've been in here a few other times in our past. Uh, <laughs> there we go. In our past uh, journeys, but what, what is this dungeon we're right now? We are in Halnir Cave. I'll let Chris talk a bit more about it. Yeah, we have. I was just uh, remembering the other day that we've done this dungeon with you before, so I thought this was the first time. But um, yeah, if you've seen this dungeon before, this is a uh, really close to the human starting city of Throne Fast. And. Um, this dungeon is actually in Avengers Pass, which is connected to Throne Fast, and it's a, uh, it's it's the about level seven, level eight is kind of the lower end range of the mobs in here, all the way up to 
right about level 20. Um, remember, these are non-instanced dungeons, so this we're going to hopefully run into other players in here who've carved out camps for themselves or moving through. Um, but you're also going to see kind of a uh, we, in our newsletter recently. If you've read that, you'll you'll see. But if not, um, there's a really interesting melting pot of entities, um, NPCs in this zone that um, maybe we can get into in more detail once we see a few more of them. Great. So what just happened there is I pulled these two spiders. The, those spiders are, they don't have much, man, many hit points, but they do hit hard, so we wanted to get rid of them yeah. first. These are, those are spiders are what we're calling ambient mobs. Um, I, this is just one example of them, um, but essentially they're mobs that um, in most cases will exist in the environment, either coming out of holes or, you know, uh, in, in the case of the spider, maybe a little bit later in development, we'll, we'll have spiders who kind of spin a web down from the ceiling and land. But the idea is they, they come in, they wreak havoc, they're chaotic, they do a whole lot of damage, but they have next to no life. And so it just keeps groups on their toes, um, adds a little bit of uh, some surprise to the encounters. Um, We'll see more of those as we move through. There's actually two types of spiders in here like that. The uh, Cyrachnid that we just killed, and then the Celis Creeper we'll see in a bit. Very cool. I'm missing the guy on the left again. By the way, a uh, quick note for chat. Maybe. We're not going to be taking many questions during the stream. Um, however, there are going to be times when they're going to prompt me for questions, and at that point I'll look over and try to pick some out of chat. But that's going to be kind of few and far between. Today we're going to be focusing on the dungeon. <laughs> Yeah, in the past, I feel like our, our streams, you know, they've, we've we've tried to put a, a form and a structure around them to make them as informative as possible about the game in general, but just been excited to do more of a um, laid-back group. Uh, just crawl. Crawl through the dungeon, talk about, talk about our classes, talk about the mobs, our abilities, what we're doing, what's happening. Um, excited to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, this is one of the first times that I've gotten to, to play kind of like a fleshed out character, because as I've told my stream, I'm doing my best to avoid the pre-alpha right now, because the last thing I have is time to play a game offline, <laughs> and I know I'll get addicted the second I start. Um, but one thing that's very interesting I'm noticing with this guy is this isn't a button spammer. I can't just use every ability the second it's up. I have to, I'm, I'm running into endurance issues all the time. So that's, yeah. that's making this a lot more interesting. Yeah, well, that's important to note, man. And and interestingly, um, in the first few sessions of pre-alpha, a lot of the feedback was that the combat was feeling somewhat spastic, and it, and it was because we had just switched over to this new ability system, um, and endurance wasn't working right at the start. It hadn't been rehooked up yet, and so there wasn't any limitation on the monk or the rogues or even the warriors their ability usage. And now that we've gotten that dialed in again. Um, feedback starting to come in that matches our internal experience, which is it, it feels kind of like it should now. Um, as far as you know, you, you have the freedom to choose, and endurance is a, a pretty fastly regenerating resource, but then you're also clamped as well. So you have to make more strategic decisions about which abilities you use, obviously, especially ones that have the higher cooldowns. So, yeah, and I'm also noticing a lot of the abilities now have like DOTs, passive buffs, like this one here. The blackjack kit gives me 50% speed for six seconds, so I need to make sure I keep enough endurance to use that while also wanting to do the damage stuff. It's uh, exactly. There's going to be a lot of opportunity for rotational kind of configuration in this, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So yep. a lot of reactionary to, stuff. Yep. You're going to notice something as we walk up here. We, um, if you get right close to this beam here, you're going to see a little pop up. Oh, this pillar looks ancient. So, Chris, did you want to tell us a little bit about the uh, perception system? I'm going to pull both of these. Oh man, where do you, where do you start? <laughs> um, just to keep it quick, it's our way of uh, bringing storyline to an open world game, and we want the environment just like here. You know, you run by a pillar, and um, this is hard coded right now to go off. Uh, doesn't have anything to do at this moment with being, you know, having perception scale. It's, it's more of a proof of concept in a way. Um, but we got a message and it makes this uh, pillar all of a sudden more interesting. And so we're gonna check it out here in a second, see what we find. 
Man, I love that Mez effect. Yeah, that it's makes nice. it real easy to see when they're locked down. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's nice to have that visual cue instead of just kind of guessing. I think they made the the particle effect bigger, so I'd, I'd quit breaking the Mez. <laughs> it was made for Brad specifically. Yeah. Well, there, there's a normal Mez visual effect, and there's a Brad Mez <laughs> visual effect. So we always patch in the Brad one when we yeah. do streams. <laughs> Brad, I was thinking the other day. <laughs> one of my one of the my strongest memories, um, development wise, uh, was that really early on stream we did in Avengers Pass, where you you pulled I think inadvertently the entire civilization of orcs. I remember that in that in that northern kind of snowy region. Re region. I mean, it was it was it was beautiful, and it was it was it was. Uh, I just remember laughing so hard, even just muting myself and laughing because I was laughing so hard at how you managed to pull so many. Of course, it had to do with our, you know, we we were still early in our like aggro radius and social aggro mechanics, but it was uh, one of my favorite memories. Hopefully, we can you can pull something off like that this afternoon. <laughs> so, Co, sorry, um, Co, if you want to come around to the back here, uh, where Mikhail is standing. You oh, should get another cue saying that there's, there's something, something in the rubble. There's something shiny in the rubble, and I can click it now. Yeah. Oh! Nice! And there's a key. So that's just kind of one of the examples of how you're going to be interacting with the environment to, uh, to unravel stories and find secrets. Huh. Um, we do have our first kind of fully fleshed out... Um, chapter, if you will, of the uh, the storyline in Thronefast, one of the first storylines that a keeper, someone who's involved in the perception system, kind of like you call it, you know, a crafter is someone who does the crafting system, uh, a keeper is someone who does the perception system, and we'll hopefully have a chance to show off that storyline on a stream here in the, in the near future. Which way am I going? Um, you know, it wouldn't be a bad idea to uh, take a Half left here. Right. Okay. By the way. Yeah, let's get this get rid of this pather first. Some of our um, observant, uh, well, I wouldn't, I shouldn't say observant. Some of our more fortunate PA testers may have noticed that the um, the crew bosses uh, drop some pretty nice armor upgrades um, at this level, so it'd be good for Ben to grab a few of those. So oh, there's okay. the cellist creepers we're talking about. Some more of the ambient mobs. Again, very. Very low health, but they do a uh, a lot of damage. Yeah, Chris, if you can, I mean, you know, like like you said, we've shown nice. we've shown this dungeon before in the past, but it's received a visual revamp. The abilities are are new. We've got new visual effects. The population is much more thought out. Bosses, sub bosses. Yeah, um, I was gonna say skeletally, it looks like I've been here, but this is the first time I've seen it with the lighting effects, and it actually uh, it looks lived in now. Mm. Yeah, it's yeah. it's part of our pre-alpha testing. People are in here, and uh, it's much closer to, you know, not being just a, a prototypical zone that we're working on, but an actual uh, something we would ship with. Yeah, definitely. Two incoming. I'm working on the worker. So a All couple. Right. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say I'm messing the hand. I'm trying to, anyways. We got ads. Uh oh. Oh, I, uh, that was my fault. Oh, did you get the wrong one? I missed right, fired, I guess, yeah. I'm gonna pull these ones. Oh, uh, yeah. Down a it's alright, I'm getting them. I'll keep them messed. Okay. Yeah. Brad, do you want to do this, this, try to... this other hand? Actually, we, this, one's, this one's almost dead. I got it. Yeah. Okay. We're in the mine hit next. Yeah, sorry. No problem. Just trying to find my attack. <laughs> you know it gets serious when everyone just goes silent. <laughs> yeah, I'm just burning down. <laughs> just like the old days, man. Going full convo here. Oh, man. I'm gonna take one of those off you, Zoe. Oh my lord. 
That guy there. Oh! And you made him mad. Yeah, I just, you know. I think we're on that I one. I created the mess, I figured yeah. I'd better keep him messed. And there's my aggro debuff there. So, a couple questions while we're doing this. Is there going to be gear that adds to endurance? Uh, no, not not any plans for that at this point. We're going to, at least right now, the, the plan is to keep it at a 100-point pool. But there will definitely be gear that adds to the speed with which you regenerate endurance Ooh. and abilities that do that um, and heal the actual endurance pool as well. Um, Very cool. Yeah. Almost like a melee DPS heal. That's an interesting idea. Mm -hmm. And it, and it and it works too. And, and now that you've experienced a little bit of the rogue, you can tell where that would really allow for some serious burst. Oh yes. So another couple things, uh, just just real quick questions uh, for people that maybe look at the user interface and thinking about in terms of old games. Um, I mean, I have one hot bar available to me now. Are there more plans to add more hot bars in the future? Well, it's tricky because we, we've, we've, our plan for a while has been to limit um, the amount of abilities that players have available to them at, at any one time. We've been, you know, maybe more generous than some expected with the 12 slots that we have currently. Um, none of that is set in stone, but the, the goal there is to try to make the decisions that you make um, meaningful uh, in that you're limited and also you can't... Um, switch out uh, abilities during combat. Right now it's only the the casted abilities that you can't. I'm pretty sure you can switch in and out actions, like melee actions, but um, we're still uh, we're still fine-tuning some of that. But, that. but that's the reason why you don't see multiple hotbars. Um, whether we will have more hotbars to accommodate things like non-combat related actions, macros, things like that, it's absolutely a possibility. Uh, we just haven't gotten there yet. Very cool, and that was actually my next question, if you guys were going to allow uh, macros, like the ability to put text in a hot bar, or a hot button. Yeah. It sounds like you yep. are in that degree. Yep. Cool. I have to admit, it's super clean with one bar. I'm not yeah. used to it. <laughs> it looks really good. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. Well, we really hope, especially with some of the boss mobs, you know, you're going to have to configure. It's a situational, synergistic kind of thing where you... Uh, choose different abilities depending on who you're, you know, what kind of mob you're going up against. Got two incoming. I'm missing the one on the left. Okay. The hand. I'm gonna pull the boss back a little. Crew boss. Yeah, these crew bosses Ooh. are the reason I wanted to come this way. Um, so let's make sure and loot those guys. On the boss. Oh, cool. Isaiah just messaged me on Discord and said that, that the uh, the physical actions, like the physical attacks, um, were not able to be switched out during combat. So thanks for that clarification. And like I said, that's that's not set in stone yet um, exactly how we want to handle that long term. We just know that we want the choice of your abilities uh, to be something that you think through beforehand uh, to an extent to, to match the strategy of the fight and whatnot. <laughs> We're both taunting back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> a, little bit, a little bit of ping pong there. Oh, sweet. And also, I just for the people color. watching, we taught... Yeah, there you go. There you go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that if nobody minds, because I don't have anything in there. I do. Oh, go ahead, man. Cool, so you'll notice in your chat box there, the little um, the loot message that comes up. If you hover... Oh. Well, if you click on the uh, the colored link there... You'll see the um, the stats pop up. I like it. So, in, uh, will we be able to do all item linking in chat, so I can link things from my inventory on that it, that it's equipped on me, things like that? Eventually, yes. Great. Yeah, definitely. Got 
two creepers here. Um, I was going to say, we, we've said what classes we're playing, but also we are all currently level 14. Um, I don't know if there's if you've considered any of the mobs in the area, Co, but we're, these mobs that we're fighting are, are fairly low level, except for the crew bosses. The crew bosses are level 12 to 13. Um, we're, we're moving in here a little bit for the exact reason of what we just looted, to get some studded leather armor, which is a pretty significant upgrade armor class-wise. At least to get our uh, our warriors some extra gear. We're going to be moving into some really difficult uh, encounters coming up, so it actually is pretty important that we get a little bit of, of gear um, on our warrior at least before we move in. So. Uh, to answer a question from chat, Crude, yes, trade and crafting will be in the game. I don't believe it's in here now, but they're going to have... Crafting is, from what I understand, a pretty big pillar. You can move up a little bit from this corner here for now. Yeah, craft, the harvesting crafting is a pretty major uh, system, and we will be getting that in shortly. Uh, Midwedge, I'm playing a rogue currently. All right, could be a few. Are you ready, Kim? Ready. Okay, I'm going to work on the one on the left. All right, I'll miss the guy on the right. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Oh, shoot, sorry. I pulled. Nope, I got it. Okay. Whoa. Get that aggro off. Oh, here's a, a quick question for you guys. Outside of uh, mages and casters, uh, well, cash and casters, outside of casters, is there going to be any class that is ranged focused or have a large variety of range tricks? Did you say outside of rangers? Outside of spell casters. Ah. Yeah, uh, definitely. So the ranger uh, is comes to mind. Um, the degree to which I hinted at this a little bit in the state of the game, uh, recently, but the degree to which they will be ranged versus, you know, having some melee functionality, not quite ready to share yet, but they will certainly uh, make use of a lot of ranged combat mechanics. Interestingly, the rogue as well, uh, there's there's one ability in right now. Um, I was trying to get another one in before this uh, most recent pre-alpha session. I won't give any spoilers yet, but uh, I, I love the idea of the rogue having some vials and some, you know, more alchemy type um, things that they can actually throw into combat to in, at a decent range that have, you know, in, in the spirit of the rogue, all kinds of interesting effects. Um, Smoke and mirrors is, is the one right now where they smash the vial and it puts up that little bit of uh, churning smoke that is a short term. Mez essentially basically like a sap or you know, blind. Um, they're gonna have a lot other interesting range like short, short, shorter range, not you know at the length of a bow or a spell being cast, but some kind of mid range abilities. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, another offhand question in when is Alpha scheduled if I pledge? It's not currently. Uh, there we go. Great. Not currently announced. We're in pre-alpha now. Um, pre-alpha is going to have several phases. So we're in pre-alpha phase two right now. Um, and then phase three is coming a little bit later. But as for alpha, we haven't announced a date yet. So, uh, is there a crew boss in there? Um, if there's not, then we might want to just, just skip it. Move yeah, along. I don't yeah, see yeah, it. We, we killed him already. All right. Okay. Heading back out. Great. Um, Dark Yega, uh, Eridun is playing a human warrior. He's currently dual wielding, I believe. Or he has a torch. Maybe he hits with a torch. It could burn. 
<laughs> normally, yeah. I am, normally I am dual welding, but I've got the torch so that we can uh, see things inside here better. It's pretty without torches. It's a pretty dark dungeon. Yeah, we we've got these spawns, which I think is great for playability. But but when you're streaming, you want people to be able to see things more clearly. So that brings up an interesting question. Are you guys planning on having environments that kind of require lighting and torches and things like that? Like, if you just were to run in with no lighting, it would be kind of, quote, too dark kind of thing? Uh, we got all sorts of respawns happening. Oh, Lord, yeah. I'm gonna, pull, I'm gonna pull these guys up. I don't know if it's gonna help at all, but... We're just in the I'll, I'll answer that happening. question in just a second. Yeah, take your time, take your time. <laughs> yep. I think everyone understands. Are uh, we on the worker? Yeah. Yeah. This this is fairly mild it, it, in comparison to what we're going to be moving into soon, but it's still good to good to practice. Um, yeah. So to answer that question, simply yes. Um, you know, we with our atmosphere system. Um, again, just a, a quick primer. We have extreme climates and atmospheres, and they're similar in that they both are environments in the game that have pretty dramatic effects, effects on players, um, detrimental effects, but the extreme climates are kind of your natural phenomenon, things like frigid, environment, scorching, toxic, things like that, whereas atmospheres are more of your unnatural phenomenon, things that you would find in a fantasy world, and so darkness is one. Uh, what you would think of as almost supernatural darkness or um, you know, darkness that goes beyond the natural. Whether we would have entire environments like whole zones or areas like that, I don't know, but certainly there will be pockets where you will enter an atmosphere of complete blackness and you know, it may be the, the torch and the range of the torch lighting is all you have. It could be that torches um, are even rendered ineffective in those environments and so you're going to be focused more on s sound cues or um you know other things that maybe aren't quite ready to share yet so yes darkness lighting those things will play a major role i got three but there's a there's a pit boss and i wanted to get him before he passed back yeah i'm getting a mezzed boss everyone first? on the boss yeah you got it Did I just call him a pit boss? I think I did. Yeah, he did. I wasn't gonna say. <laughs> uh. Oh, to address this in chat, because I'm seeing this a little bit. Um, the combat in this game is designed to be slower. It's designed so your your group can't just kind of walk through the dungeon. Uh, when, especially when you get large amounts of enemies on you, like you've been seeing here. I mean, we only have three, three guys on us now. But this is the kind of thing where if you pull too many, you need to be thinking about an escape plan. Uh, and that's kind of the feel they're going for with the game. It's not necessarily, they don't want, you know, fast, big combat with lots of combos and stuff. It's much more about kind of a methodic grind through a dungeon. Sword pace more, a little bit more tactical. Yeah, tactical, strategic. And skill's gonna matter. Um, Which again, we're not really seeing right now. Like I said, this is these these mobs are fairly lower level. They don't pose a huge threat even when they're ganging up on us like this. We will be moving into sections here shortly, though. That um, strategy will actually you'll, you'll see it playing the role it's meant to play. Oh, and to address another question, there will be assisting in the game. It's just not in here right now. But there, there, there will be assisting. Yeah. Right now, it's a manual assist. This is this is the what? What do you call this, Brad? The classic system. <laughs> <laughs> the back in my day system. Vintage. <laughs> we used to pick targets all by ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Didn't need a computer to tell us what to fight. We used to play with our monitors off. <laughs> and we liked it. Our boss Titan. looking. 
Oh, now to be clear, Tight Note said, so basically this game can't be played solo. No, that's that's not true. This game is angled towards group play, but there are certainly ways you can play it solo for sure. Um, but that being said, you're not going to be fighting any, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, guys, I don't think you're going to be fighting through any dungeons and killing bosses solo. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's the, definitely not at appropriate level. Yeah, it's mo mostly group, but then you've got on one end the solo content, and then on the other end the raid content. But with a primary focus on on the classic group. Yeah, you'll have, you'll have some classes that find that they can fare fairly well solo. Um, typically, once you've out leveled the content a little bit, um, in, in some cases maybe at level, but the 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 norm will be players coming together to form even smaller groups. It doesn't have to be a full group necessarily, um, but having a couple of uh, of friends with you is is going to be usually the way to roll. Keep going straight, yeah. Uh, uh, we're going to turn right. Turn right. Is the warden up? We should see if the warden is up. I think he is. I see him. Yep, he's up. We should try him. <laughs> try, not kill. Try. Just <laughs> <laughs> on the word try. Gotta try the boss. been really fun seeing uh seeing testers in here um take shots at the at the bosses uh we've got some minor bosses in here the warden okay go, go. Lord. messing the ones on the left i just focus kind of warden. pulled that i didn't uh yeah focus on the warden yeah that was that was very elegant <laughs> well, i didn't realize that's such a monstrous egg for, for once it wasn't my fault uh oh, I'm something. All right, there we go. I think. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what that was. I kind of doubled over for a second. Looked like. Yeah, yeah, me too. Not sure. That's a little glitch. This would be a good time to. Yeah, it's not a glitch. Game designer. <laughs> it's, Watch it's it's a little bit. Yeah, so what he's using there is just uh, the warden shout, and it's it's basically a stun. Uh huh. That he's uh, a in on us. So that explains it. Yeah. Those noggles. That's cool. All right. I take that back. Very cool. We're getting. Uh, there's been a with the new ability system. It's not just the existing classes and future classes, but the guys have been hard at work um, giving the NPCs their own abilities and their own flavor. By the way, just want to say I love this split combat window. This is this is going to be super handy. The offensive and defensive targeting. Yeah. No. Well, the offensive and defense, or the uh, the solo and group uh, log on the bottom right. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I remember the night that um, Daniel Cran, our lead programmer, and I were working on trying to figure out a solution for what was just Oops. an unbelievable amount of spam, um, which we still. I am out of mana, guys. So. Good GG. luck. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I was trying to weave some get, nukes in there. Your, get in here and melee. melee. Oh, Drag, can you talk? Hey, this is a great Fine. a great time to mention, though. You'll notice that our enchanter, which up until now has been nuking most of the time, my man has been fine. But now that she's forced to cycle her mezes and she's not nuking, then I'm now struggling to keep up mana-wise. So the... That nuke that she uses is every time she deals damage with that nuke, um, she's spreading a little bit of mental energy to the rest of the members of the group. So it's helping with the uh, IE. I have the one. A little bit of a mana regen. Uh, I'll go ahead and try to tank this guy here for a little bit. We should be good. The warden's down. So, uh, Mikhail, why don't you tell us a little about a little bit about what happened since you just died there, about what that's going to mean and how you get back and all that good stuff. Um, yeah, uh, so there, you have several options, but uh, right now I'm just going to wait till the combat finishes and hopefully get a res. Um, do you have res at 14? I do. Good. I have res. <laughs> okay. Res is uh, happier, younger brother. So, when you die, you're going to. Well, actually, Chris can probably talk a little bit more about the, the death penalty, but, um, or if you wipe, if it's an entire group wipe, you're going to have to run back to get your corpse. 
which in most cases you're not going to want to do. So death really does have meaning in this game, and you want to avoid it. And one thing we did purposely is the death penalty is pretty severe. Um, we may or we, or we may not tone that down in future phases of testing, but it's always better to start more severe and then scale it back than make it weak and try to and then make it harder. Uh, uh oh, someone just yelled train. Oh lord. Uh, it's probably on the other side of the zone. I think we're all right. Okay. <laughs> There were some ugly ones last night, really ugly. And then someone pulled the we, one boss at people. We see some guy training 30 mobs to the group, and he's like, Hi from the community! Yeah. As he runs <laughs> off. <laughs> Probably a good time to, to mention, I mean, I know a lot of your, your viewers already know, but for any new ones, you know, this is, we are not instancing. These are shared encounters, shared dungeons. Um, you can help each other out. You, you got to deal with trains. You've got to have that situational awareness. Um, so a little bit different, a little bit different there. So, and, and this may be kind of a, uh, an overarching question here for this specific thing and feel free to just ignore it. But instancing came around when zones used to have too many people in them as a way to kind of dissuade from having like packed zones. Are you guys going to do anything to address that or kind of let it organically work out kind of like back in the classics? I, our, the plan is to let it work out organically. I think that's one of those things that back in in that time period, um, there weren't a whole lot of alternatives. Uh, and so it was seen as mainly a problem that was corrected. And now here we are on 10 plus years of it having been corrected. And I think it's it people are realizing that the, the charm uh, in having shared environments, yes, it's messy. And yes, it can be very frustrating at times. But... I think we've had enough time without it now to, to realize what we miss about it. The other thing, too, awesome. I can say is, uh, you know, back in, in, in the old days, you could only make a zone so big. I mean, you just couldn't cook a zone. The, the, the computers weren't powerful enough. The engine wasn't powerful enough. With uh, what we've got, we can make ridiculously large uh, zones, whether they're outdoors or indoor dungeons. And so that means you can have multiple groups in there and you're not just running over each other all the time which is kind of what happened in the past so that that's a kind of a advantage of the tech that we have now too it is awesome. you're going to also have situations like counter cave which i mean this is a this is a large dungeon but it's not sprawling it's not vast and spacious there's lots of tight corridors and it's been interesting seeing the testing population in here Things, you know, a few times getting a little bit heated. Um, all in, you know, I mean, everyone's been a good support about it, about everything so far. But it's just been really refreshing. Uh, it's the best way I know how to put it. To see players coexisting, um, competing even over spawns, over resources. It, it feels right. And uh, yes, we're going to have big, large, spacious areas. And then we're going to have little pockets like this, too, where... You know, there's going to be there's going to be some real diplomatic socializing going on. Um, and I think that's that's healthy. I think that's great. And I'm really excited to see it come back. Right. But, but this time we're in control of, of where we want funnels to exist and where we want open spaces. And we just didn't have those options. In the yeah, past. that's right. That's right. So we can we can make it, you know, it's designed around playability and the types of encounters we want as opposed to. Uh, you know, we've got to cram everybody in there. Yeah. So this this door here wouldn't have been able to uh, open, but since we picked up that key, we can... Uh... Oh, cool. So if we had not found that key at the beginning, then we just couldn't progress through here. Correct. Not a great example, because <laughs> it, we don't want necessarily for the perception system to work as like a... A, like a, a hard way lock yeah, yeah we, we don't want it to necessarily be that way it, were this more of like a a flavor area where you're going to run into some npcs you can maybe interact with and and learn some stuff about this this dungeon i absolutely think that would be um part of what what we could see but something like you need a keeper to find a key to actually progress to the deepest content in the dungeon probably not going to see that that's why i said earlier it's more of a proof of concept right now um, I think we grabbed legitimate. boss, guys. Did we? Uh, oh, we did, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. Uh -oh. oh, no worries. Sorry. Yeah, it's... I'm switching over to... Uh, should we be on air dunes right now? 
let's pull him out into um, this this room here, so we don't get the uh, the roamer in the in the boss room. Oh. Pull him into this little uh, entry room. Oh, we got the roamer. Should we <laughs> focus boss right now? Yes. Uh, he's not moving though. I can't. Ah, like, oh, you know what? It's because LOS. I got it. I'm gonna try and LOS him around the corner here just to get he him out of there. Want to come out. Yeah. Oh wow! So right. if I try to open the door and I'm in the way of it, it won't open. Oh lord! I'm out of mana. <laughs> Zoe, I need you nuking right. if you can. Yeah, we've done like no damage. Last, last, last. Yeah, sorry, I was trying to mess guys, but everyone was breaking. So, a great example of uh, NBC abilities here. This guy's doing all sorts of crazy stuff. It's also a great example of the kind of pace we need to move at. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's right. okay. There's a well, yeah, there's a white. <laughs> yeah. So, do I have any Bane death like abilities? I don't. <laughs> uh, death ability. Uh, yes, I, have, I can die. That's that's a way to do it. Everyone down. Everyone down. There we go. Oh man, that was that was that was rough. I sense somebody's cheating. <laughs> it's just my commanding presence. <laughs> <laughs> Should we go ahead and release? Well, yeah, release or what's the plan? No, okay. just hang there. Coke and Coke and release. Coke oh, and release. Look at all these people. Oh, oh, cool! Yes. Did you zone up at the uh, at the? Oh the yeah. Start? Nice. Yeah, there's a ton of people up here. This is awesome. Real yeah. people. Yeah, we're really Hi, excited. And, you know, in the past, we've had other groups in during the streams. They've been other Visionary Realms people. Now, this this is our first time having real testers in there with us. We don't know what they're going to do. <laughs> Please don't train us. <laughs> they, they, uh, well, we run the risk. Uh, by the way, I saw this question in chat a minute. What is a dev stream? A dev stream right now is I currently, a fan of the game, not affiliated with the project, am playing with five people that are. The five people in this group are all developers of this game, Pantheon. We're currently playing the pre-alpha. Uh, you can find more information if you're interested at PantheonMMO.com. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Perfect. And uh, yeah, that's where we are right now. Yeah, and just a reminder that we are in pre-alpha so there's still a lot of testing phases to come um, if, if our pledgers can gain access to some of the phases we don't have um, pre-alpha is no longer available to newcomers because we've sort of maxed out there but uh, but alpha will be available in our pledge packages yep yeah, uh, Phobos says is the pre-alpha out no this they, this <laughs> the Pantheon devs are doing something kind of outrageous by today's standards their alpha pre-alpha pre-alpha and beta all actually mean what that word means um, so right now pre-alpha is you know they're still working on major components it's a very closed thing everyone you see in here right now are people that have backed the project and are playing the game knowing that they're not playing an end game product. They're playing a pre-alpha. So there's a pre-alpha, then an alpha, then a beta, and then the game gets released. So uh, it's it's got a little bit of ways to go, but this is the actual an actual pre-alpha, not like today's marketing standard terms. Yeah, we avoid the term early access for that for that very reason. Yeah. Um, I mean, yes, technically you're accessing the game early, but uh, it's not. It's, it's, it's really not an early access game. It is really pre-alpha, so you're gonna... Uh, I think we showed on, on one of the previous streams, we even showed what the game was like in one of the cities where it was still gray boxing, so the textures hadn't been applied to the buildings or anything. That's the kind of thing that you see in pre-alpha, and it's not for everybody. Um, that's uh, that's sort of why we closed things off when we did as well. We, re we had a number in mind, we reached that number, and, and we closed it off. Summon you to the group, Co. Oh, great. Okay, thank you. Ooh. Let's, okay, um, so are, are these guys all... They're not really linked, but I, I don't know if I can split them. No, they're not linked. That's for sure. Oh, but they are going to come together. I like the corpse loot window. That's cool. Should we try them again? Or her? So we're dealing, we're starting to deal with um, more at level content here. So um, plus the wraiths, uh, Tim, I'd love, I'd love for you to be able to speak a little bit about some edge. of the abilities. Oh no, guys, that summon you just saw, that, that's a dev thing. That's not a, that's not an ability. A that's not a class skill. Yeah, 
In normal situations, we would have raised him back in. But in normal situations, our cleric would have died too, so. <laughs> Tim, why don't, you, why don't you speak a little bit about the um, abilities we were seeing on those raids? Okay, yeah, sure. So, a lot of a lot of what the rave does um, is, is just kind of crossover. So, you'll see a lot of soul drain type mechanics. Um, they'll, they'll take something like your armor class from you and attach it to themselves. Um, so, when you see yourself being hit with those beams, they're, they're typically stealing something. Um, and as you get deeper and you experience some of the other bosses, it, it gets... It gets a bit crazier, some of the things they're doing to the players, uh, just trying to bring that awareness back to uh, the visuals of, of what's on you, debuff-wise, and, and just make sure that uh, you're positioned properly to just account for some of the things these wraiths are doing. What about this boss? Be, be for us the equivalent of a player who's done this fight a few times and uh, give us a, a taste of what to expect from this boss. Ah, uh, he's well. He he wiped us once. <laughs> 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 so he's nasty, you know. He has, you know, he has some of his beams that he's doing, but he's also, you know, he's he's loading you up when he's nuking you. He's actually loading you up with a secondary bomb that's going off on whoever he hits. Um, some of the uh, some of the abilities, the curse bindings, it's it's resource draining you, but it's it's replenishing him. So it's. There's just a lot going on. It feels kind of chaotic, but once you settle in and, and kind of focus, um, you can't overcome it. But you know, obviously, with the added mobs that are that are coming with him, it just makes things a little bit more difficult. All right. Well, let's get a strategy together. So I I'm seeing the boss plus three soldiers, which means we're they don't have a healer, they don't have a a nuker. Um, We've my stra three. my strategy yeah. after what Combo said would be to skip this encounter. <laughs> <laughs> to log out and come back later. Yeah, exactly. uh, <laughs> yeah. gotta go. Uh... So the problem we're having is if Zoe, if Kim, Zo Zoe's Kim is um, playing Zoe, so I'll just call you Kim. Um, Kim is your real name. If Kim is focused on mezzing and spending all of her mana mezzing and her time mezzing, then I'm not getting the mana feed that I need. Um, to keep up the hills for this fight. So, um, it seems like a good opportunity to use an off tank with Kim feeding me mana. I can, it'd probably be easier for me to keep two tanks up while we focus the boss than it would be to try and heal everyone um, and run out of mana. So, I would say let's focus the boss. Kim, um, you focus on just feeding mana by nuking the boss. And either, I guess, Brad, if you want to round up two soldiers that come, let's try to pull it uh, at, a, at a time when we're not going to get the third one. And, Brad, you can round up oh, the two soldiers and keep them on you. Yep, repops. Does, does that make sense? Yep. Sounds okay. good to me. Okay, so I'm kind of glad that these spawn now instead of while oh. we're in the middle of the fight. Yep. By the way, I really like the decision to make the red border aggro on you and not when you're auto attacking. Because I was like listening to you guys and just looked at my screen and noticed the entire screen lit up when I got aggro. Mm -hmm. That was that was kind of great. There you go. You know, I'm wondering too. It might not be a bad idea. We got oh, to oh here we go. Yeah, so there's a bit of a uh, bit of a bug right in this general area where some of the mobs are being aggroed through the floor. We have a fix in for it, but we just didn't get it in for this new build. So that's why you're seeing some of these mobs roll through like this. Let's let's try and keep the same strategy though. Yeah, I don't think we have the boss. This could actually work for us. Yeah. Yep. I think I want to make sure I'm on the right one here. Yeah, there uh, we go. I'll sort of split them out. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Great thing about these these wraiths is they drop um, some no rent items that are uh, pretty decent upgrades to the weapons that we have right now. So, loot. 
for anyone that's not an old school player, could you identify no rent? No rent means you log out or you zone and they go away. They poof. So you have to use them on that character on that run. That's right. Temporary power. Kind of like a Prius. <laughs> uh, Halim Zhao, I think they're still nailing down uh, their their exact plans for how people are going to be able to traverse around the world and mounts and things like that. Yeah, yeah that's right. All right, let's see. We're on this guy. There we go. Yeah, Curiosity, is there an indicator that shows which way these guys are facing? Because I just There's noticed not. if you get if you get right behind them and look at them, it looks like they're looking right at you from behind. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> they're, they're facing you wherever you stand. <laughs> it's the Mona Lisa of moms. Mm -hmm. I think I'm working on the Aerodunes here. Yeah, switch over. That's oh, all good. We both gotta die at some point. Uh, another random question while we're fighting here. Uh, Bowser was wondering about name reservations for pledgers and how that's going to work. If that's even something you guys are thinking about yet. I think we have name reservation in some of the pledges, don't we? I'd have to double check. We'll see if we can get you that info later, Bowser. Well, that, right, that's, that's the AOE stun that they do is crazy. We were fortunate to get all soldiers. Uh, Zerker, there is no uh, release date yet for the game. They're in pre-alpha now, then they have alpha, beta, and then release. So it's it's a little bit off, but it's making a lot of progress. Yeah, so early name reservation comes at the very in, in all of our pledge matches. There you go. Pro we don't have the details yet. Probably going to be a first come, first serve, because obviously there's going to be some potential for overlap there, but... Oops. We got an ad, and it looks like Brad has a curse on him. A curse? Uh, appears that way. Oh, looks like it wore off on you. Yeah, that so, was that big purple graphic? Yeah, well, one of the uh, one of the things we're doing with you know um, groups of mobs such as the race or the ratkin that are in here is they all have this. I wouldn't say an innate ability, but they they all share a similar ability that they can all inflict and in, inflict on you. So, for instance, the wraiths, um, they have a thing called fade in presence where they kind of shift you over to another dimension so to speak and with that you know your run speed reduces your uh, attack speed reduces things of that nature and i mean an example for the ratkin is uh they have a disease on them so at any one time at any one point you could be clawed and uh have that disease inflicted on you cool basically like a like an iconic ability that you know the 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 wraiths all share amongst themselves, and then the ratkin. It's called drawn sickness. The ratkin are drawn ratkin. They're drawn to the caves. Um, they're drawn to the crystals in the cave, the celestium crystals, those green crystals you may have seen. And part of that exposure over time has um, developed this disease-like plague that they have a chance to to spread to players. Um, and we and it, and it could be that we evolve that ability to also have a chance to spread to other players um, as well in proximity. But I know that Tim and Corey have done a really good job, and Justin, our lead writer as well. I've, I've been privileged to be in um, most of the meetings when we're kind of conceiving a new NPC uh, and 
the different types of abilities. Basically, in counter design, we're, we're designing the NPC conceptually as far as visuals, but then also taking a look at the um, the abilities they use. And it's uh, the wraiths are probably my favorite right now. Um, we'll see it as we get a little deeper. It's it's kind of organized chaos in a way. Um, it's a lot of fun, and it's hard to tell what's going on all the time, but that adds to the challenge. And looking forward to that. Uh, let's make sure we loot up. Did you guys... Yeah, I was gonna say, I grabbed a nice no-rent sword, and I saw a pair of nice gloves over here somewhere. Kind of just Kale, snagged you grab them? <laughs> yeah. well, I, okay, cool, great. Yeah, there's some on there, it looks like. You might wanna... I think Ben just ninja looted some pretty cool handguards. I sure did. Yeah, he did. All right, we need to, uh, we need to get in here. Yeah. Are we gonna fight him in here now? Uh, I think that's a good plan. Okay. I'll just rush to the back and start tanking over there. And Brad, if you want to grab the two ads and just soft tank them in some other corner or something. Roger that. Yeah, let's split corners. Okay, here we go. Everybody else, everybody if follow Mikhail. <laughs> All right, here we go. Everyone who's not Brad, follow Mikhail. Oh, no. I'm sorry, did you say ads first or just burn the name? We're on the name. Got Brad's it. the only one on the ad. Perfect. On the ads. Himself? Yeah. Oh man, I'm hitting for pennies. Yeah, we might need some levels for this. I'm not sure. Also, a lot of misses. What's this guy con? Oh, he's yellow. Okay. No wonder. The ads, the other guys are getting an even con. And I'm not doing much damage at all. <laughs> no. We're, we're oh. pretty low on DPS in this group anyway. Oh, I guess a big heal on the mob. Healer's out of mana. We're about half health in the uh, main mob right now. Yeah, if you have a stun, definitely use it. Give my last heal for a few seconds. Okay. I could use my smoke bomb on a mob if that'll help. I, I will it even work on the boss? No, I just use it on the mob. Oh, I see. Oh, there I go. Tank down. It's cool. I got this. Brad, can you? Oh, no, Brad's not. <laughs> Both tanks. Oh God! Oh, the pain. Oh, these. Not are pretty close. To death. If we focus the name, we may be able to get him down. I'm almost dead, though. I'm just doing everything I can here. Ah, there we go. Uh, just a bit more. Anything left than anybody know. Yeah, we may need to burn down the ads first. If we can, can if we can control the fight enough. We got it so close, though. Like That was pretty close. That was, like, what, 3% health left? I'm just gonna release, let's just do a summon. Make it easy on ourselves. I see a it's naked arrow, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good fight. That was a good fight. I think we just don't yeah, have the DPS to burn the boss, so we, we really need close. to drop the ads first. Okay. Oh, and here's the only race we don't have in our party here. Ooh. Two of them are the ogre and the archive, right? Yeah. Chris, are you doing the summons? Yep, I can. You guys ready? Yeah. I want my gear back. Oh, 
I know what you're doing. That's a good look for you. <laughs> Thanks, man. I've been hitting the gym. <laughs> Lazarus, love it, buddy. Love it. <laughs> so if you target your corpse and type slash corpse, you'll be able to drag it out. Ooh. Everybody's trying to open the door at the same time. It's <laughs> going back and forth. Need to be closer. Oh, you know what? Uh, I have the tools for this. Where's my hide and sneak? How you feeling? All right. Thinking like a rope. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, this is kind of my specialty. At least it should be. Please don't kill me, mobs. Apologies in advance if I wipe the group. <laughs> I'm trying to get close <laughs> enough. Do I have to target it, too? Right, it's yeah. type slash corpse. Yeah, I guess you have to target it. Oh, God. Oh, God. There we go, I think. It said dragging, but it's not moving. Could it be because I'm stealth, maybe? Try again. Need to be closer. It might be I was closer. able to do it from the doorway. Just target and right click. Are these guys really not aggro to me right now? No, he's he is. Well, they all are. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do some ninja looting here. Although, now that'll probably pop me out of stealth, and then I actually would die. Yeah. Uh, I'll, can I just run in and loot it when the fight starts? Yeah. Okay, yeah, if I don't that. do that way. Yeah, it just seems to be a bugged corpse right now. Yeah, it's all good. Bugs in a pre-alpha? How dare you? Go figure. How dare you? <laughs> all right. Let's do it. Ready when you guys are. Okay, same plan, except we're taking out the ads first, yeah? Yep. Aggro in the back. Crew boss. Oh. Pit boss. <laughs> the pit boss? Is the pit boss back? Yep. <laughs> Thought we were counting cards. You thought I was a rogue, but I'm actually a hidden monk. Get those punches in. I don't think this combat music was in last time I played. Good stuff. Well, you know, it would have helped if I turned auto attack on. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. yeah. We don't do much damage anyway, Ben. <laughs> Yeah, chat for the record, if you're looking at my combat log, I know it says Pierce. I think I think it actually is still registering my equipment as on, from the looks of it. Which, again, what, whatever, it's pre-alpha. <laughs> it's fine. All right, ready to charge in? Ready here? Let's here do it. Go. All right, burn the ads. It must be. Now we don't worry about it. We are... I'm going to be on Aerodunes. Yeah, these guys are like the four. Hmm. It's just like the boss is kind of stealing our mana. Do we need to move away or? Yeah, is it rain? It does, it does it have a range on it? I can't LOS him in this room though, so he's just gonna stand. Definitely does have a range. Down. Um, Tim's down. No, he's not. You're just out of mana. Yeah, I'm just out of mana. Uh, Zoe is getting beat up over there. What's the um, what's the ad status? What I mean, are we close to downing one? One ad, one ad is Thumbs almost down. Other ads on Zoe. Okay. Yeah, it should be down. Ads down. Right. One ad's down. Next ad. All right. Zoe, get close to me so I can get your um. Oh, max down. Ah, damn. Boss is loose. 
Oh, uh, he's zapping me. Just gonna try to burn this ad down. The pain! So back in here with the boss by himself. Yeah. Yeah, if we if we do end up wiping, if we move quickly, the two ads will still be down. I'll make it exponentially easier. Oh no, S S Venom. I don't believe restrictions have been put on items yet. So if you're wondering why I could wear those plate gauntlets, I think that's just because restrictions aren't yet. Yeah. It's the same reason I think uh, our Enchanter is wearing some looks like some leather and chain and stuff. Well, that's because that's a preset model. We had, that uh, the go. clothing hasn't been done for her it yet. Just the human male. You Restrictions are them. actually in, so that would be that would be an example of something to bug. If there's if you're able to wear something you don't think you should wear, then that's something I'll take note of. Oh, great. Okay. Like meat on your head. We had one bug where you could, you could head meat on head your head. head. <laughs> there's an ad. There's an ad. Just be careful. Behind you to the left, Brad. That air dunes on is at like 20%. If there's anyone left alive to finish it off. New shield. Oh. This is gonna be rough. <laughs> oh boy. him up. <laughs> Shoot time. Come on, guys. He, he was almost there. there. there hey, grats, Quanvo. Quanvo. Yes, I'm going down in style here. Our misfortune <laughs> is your gain, apparently. So did you ding off of that mob or from our deaths? I guess is the question. <laughs> Probably both. Oh, oh. there he goes. By the way, guys, there's a lot of great questions in chat. Uh, we're not going to be able to get to all of them. Whenever we have some some downtime, we'll pull some more questions from chat. Appreciate the patience, guys. I see a little downtime coming right now. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> there we go. That, that's a good point. Um, Suplup is wondering what kind of role shamans are going to be having in the game. Oh, man. Well, I think shaman are in a pretty good place right now um, as far as uh, their identity goes. And... Shaman are, um, if, if you're familiar with uh, the old EverQuest bard, that was some of the inspiration um, for me with the Shaman, which is that they, as a, as a you know, priest archetype class, a healing support class, um, I love the idea that Shaman were also able to be very proficient in dealing damage, usually through damage over time abilities. Um, and uh, so that's certainly in place for the Shaman. They have some of the best dots um, in the game right now. Uh, and we'll continue to have um, some, pretty, uh, some pretty awesome dot presence. But they're also um, oh. slowers. They're resistance manipulators. I got the boss. Wait, um, just the boss? This could be perfect. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. OK. <laughs> Sorry to cut you off there. It was all intentional. Masters of Overtime is, is one way I would think of the strong. Very cool. Can someone open the door for me? Oh no! Man, this guy hits like a truck! <laughs> hey, Brad, are you locked behind this door? Yeah. <laughs> he's, got, he's got an ad on too. I tried to get out before the ad, but. Brad is just taking us out here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Rollick 101, yes, there's definitely reses in the game. We're, we're a little low level for reses. We're only level, this group's 14, but there definitely are reses in the game. Yeah. And we're down again. Boop. It's okay, I get to keep coming back and saying hi to all these folks. That, that works. Exactly, yeah. Looks like yeah. Looks like there's a group for their just 
little bit further from the spawn point there that are going at it. Looks pretty cool from the distance. Oh man, that rat graphic. So just a reminder to our viewers, if you like what you see, uh, we, we invite you to come out on over to PantheonMMO.com. There's plenty of pledge packages available. This uh, this project has been uh, primarily funded through crowdfunding, so we want to thank our, our backers. And if it looks like something that you're interested in, we welcome you to join us. I think the boss is uh, camping our corpses here. Yeah, he is. Um... I love that we're in pre-alpha, yet we're having all the same classic issues that we would <laughs> on live. <laughs> oh, boss is camping our corpse. Oh, was that a spawn during the mob fight? Oh, no, no. Maybe, maybe if I just open the door for him here. Yeah, <laughs> maybe he doesn't have a key. Is that weird? Uh, uh, just to answer a, a quick one, Ribbons Allmark is wondering, how does the class system work? Uh, Ribbons, it's, you just pick your class at the beginning of the game. There's going to be a variety of races and classes you pick from. You pick those when you create your character, and then you just go into the game and go from there. Yeah. And V Pathfinder, just to reiterate, no, I, I am not a developer. I'm not even, like, a sponsored person. Uh, I am just a fan. I'm a huge EQ1 fan. I basically grew up in Norath. I'm a big fan of these types of games. And this is kind of the next big classic MMO coming out. So that's one of the reasons I've been enjoying. Oh, God, what is this? Okay, boss is here. <laughs> but, yeah. All right, let's roll. All right. <laughs> Was it just me or did I see an air dune slide across my screen there for a second? <laughs> there you go. That's that special war wizard charge I heard about, right? Yeah, yeah. it's deceptively slow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a whole lot, a lot of hit points either right now. Oh, yeah, oh. Just my a big time. Quick question, with a no-rent item, if I die, I, I, I realize in pre-alpha it may be bugged or something, but is, it, is the plan for no-rent items to disappear on death as well? No, they won't disappear on death. Cool, okay. We want to be punishing in death, but we don't want to rage quit. <laughs> Permanent death. You have one life in this game. That's it. <laughs> then it deletes your hard drive. And your bank account. All of it. Just, it's all gone. Your resume, trash. First you get gone. <laughs> well, like Brad was saying earlier, we, we wanted to start more severe, and then we can always <laughs> take it off from there, you know. We want death to mean something. Yeah. A real quick question, and this is actually, there's a long answer to this, um, but just a, a quick... Uh, a quick one here. What is the appeal of a game like this compared to a more modern style of MMO such as WoW or Black Desert? Ganders, just a quick answer to this. Got him, finally. These games are much more about the social group aspect. They're a little bit slower, a little bit more tactical, and most importantly, a game like this isn't going to hold your hand between quest hubs and walk you through all their content to the end game. And then when you get to the end game, give you that little variety of end game things to do. This game is much more about, like the old school games, is much more about just existing in a full and interesting world. 
you go where you want to go. Primarily, you're just killing mobs and getting experience, although this game is opening up some doors in that regard. But the classics were like that. And it's it's much more... And granted, uh, Black Desert's not super like that. You can't actually play this way in Black Desert, but it also has the quest grind. Um, but the, the, the best way to... The TLDR is this isn't a theme park MMO, if you've heard that term. And almost every MMO coming out these days is a theme park MMO, where they just... They give you activities to do. These games are more about finding other people, exploring the world together, and most importantly, not having a predefined track to move through. So that's the appeal. That's, that's just, that's a personal answer to that question, but I'm sure uh, the devs also have their answers as well. Yeah, I'd use, I like the term shared experience. There seems to be something with human nature where if you succeed or you wipe or whatever happens, if you do it with other people, it's just a lot more memorable and a lot more fun. Uh, you know, I still hear stories uh, from people who, play, who played EQ years and years ago, uh, these amazing, you know, triumphs or failures, and it just really sticks in your mind. And this game is designed to be a home uh, retention. It's all about retention and playing this game and building your character up uh, for months, if not years. Okay, shall we... Uh... Shall we move? Ooh. And what have we got? We got a fade torn quarter staff. Oh, that's a nice one. Wow. A no rent too. Ooh. Let's move on down. Have to inch our way down here. Dark. Yeah. I didn't even know there was a door there. <laughs> uh, a little sneaky passage. Oh, and for anyone talking about the bugs, keep in mind, this is pre-alpha. The game isn't even in alpha yet. This is this is a pre-alpha. All the bugs you're seeing now will be gone before live. Well, hopefully. 99% of them, let's say that. We've got <laughs> Just like a party anyway. going on here. Yeah. Oh! Here yeah, it's definitely best more. to stay by the steps area for now. Uh, does, does the Enchanter have an AoE mess by chance? Or a little too early? A little early. At least get the soldiers in. These guys don't hit nearly as hard, so. Yeah. I'd like to know how Tim got so much XP. I cheated. Mm. <laughs> Dev cheat. No, no, I was I was at my bottom um, at 15. Maybe maybe a couple extra earlier when I was playing some offline, but I'm only like halfway through my XP bar right now. All right, going after this mender. I'm gonna try and split it out a little bit. It's kind of hard to pull these guys. Ah, uh, oh, definitely have my a lot going. Oh, I'm out here. That might have been my fault there. Yeah, we've we've identified that already, and, and there's already a fix in the works for that, and some of the persistent issues that we're seeing. Which is nice, our programming team jumps and stuff really fast. Yeah, so it's sort of hard to pinpoint the one that I'm attacking, but we all need to be on the same one because they're just healing each other right now at this point. Are we on the Mander? Yeah. Yep. From one of them. There's, there's, there's three of them. <laughs> the one yeah, that Mikhail on is facing. Let me see. I'm going to try to smoke the uh, the far one. Okay. Hey, ben, could you step back? Yeah, it's just... Do I have to LOS them? Like, they have I'm a ranged attack, and... I think, is the issue. That's yeah, the they, have, can't, they, have, they have no desire to follow us. Like, why, I can't why get them out of There's the actually walls. four menders. <laughs> Which is gonna make a great tip and back sap. I'll try. You know what? I'm gonna flip him around, around a little bit, and maybe you can give him a flip. Then. Yeah. Oh, this guy. Okay, we're making some progress here. Here we go. I'll just have to not backstab for a little bit, but that's fine. There we go, one down. Yeah. I'm gonna find another mender to work on. How ah, about this one? Perfect. There we go.
Is there a limit to group size? Yes, yeah, six. Six is the, the max group size right now. Although, are you guys planning on extending that at any point? We're pretty happy with it this far. I wouldn't set it in stone. And when we get into the guild system and how that can vary, I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, raid system, um, things, we can mix it up a little bit. But uh, for right now, we're looking at six for the group. Great. Working on this next mender. Got it. That's the wall. So you might want to move over here where I am, just kind of get out of the range of some of their. Some of our thinking behind the the six man group is you've got you know you've got the four primary roles right tank DPS you know mage crowd control and then you've got two extra slots to kind of mix it up a little bit. Uh, is that all the menders? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Right, working on the mana weaver. Okay. Nice recovery there. Yeah. Yeah. It's looking. I thought it was grim, but I think we're okay. Tim and I were talking today that these, in our push to get things ready for the last this past session of pre-alpha, that we uh, we didn't have a chance to come in and <coughs> tune tune these guys. Um, so I can say with confidence we would not have survived that um, had they had their uh, their tuning pass, specifically on the damage of their the mana weaver's damage up. But we got an ad behind this wall. It looks like. Or it's in the wall. Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah. Good calling. There's a, there's a quarter staff. I guess uh, no rent quarter staffs on there, too. Actually, yep. there's a fix for that, too. The mobs in the wall. Oh, I just thought it was a ghost. I mean, ghosts can go oh, through yeah, walls, right? right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't see any bugs anywhere. <laughs> uh, I was just talking to one of our programmers. Are, is there invisibility? Oh, absolutely. I, I was showing this earlier. If you look, this just this rogue has a hide ability, shadow walk, which is like a um, actual movement stealth ability, and then a sneak ability where you remain silent, but you have to actually stay behind the enemy. So like if, uh, if you see where Eridun is, the only way that the sneak would work is if I'm actually physically behind the mob. In that case, they wouldn't see me if I had sneak on. But if I get in front of them, then they would see me just like it wasn't even on. So. There's lots, and I'm sure uh, there's also going to be, I'm assuming, invisibility spells and things of that nature as well. Un invis to undead and stuff is all that good stuff. Uh, definitely. Ooh, yeah, there, nice. there'll just be a bit, a few more limitations, like, you know, in some of the older games, you could invis and then reconnaissance the entire dungeon with impunity and map it all out, and we're not big fans of that. Got two more incoming. Let's take the mender first. Got a third, Back. right? Is there a third? Yep. One just came repop behind us. In the oh, repop already? Well, yeah, that. Oh, you know what? Yeah, because they roamed. <laughs> they they yep. roamed up when we were trying to take the boss. I'm making it. Called out targets? What are we on? Yeah, we're on the mender. Is oh, there a solo mender? A uh, solo mender in the uh, corner near the door. Morgulis, yeah. that's a great question. Um, I'd be surprised if they had an answer to it, but uh, you guys got time for a quick one? Yeah. Good. Okay. So I'm an old school EverQuest player, but back then I had a lot of time for gaming. Now I have a job and a family. How are the devs tackling the problem of time for gaming? And I'm assuming he's talking about in terms of older school players that may have had a lot of time, but don't necessarily do now. So the, the dungeons and adventure areas are being designed so that you can play with approximately, at approximately two hour sessions and then camp out and resume your adventures, you know, the next time you're, you're, you and your buddies get together. Um, so, I mean, there's nothing stopping you from doing some, you know, an epic eight-hour play, but you're not going to feel compelled where you, you know, there's, it's, it's all night or nothing. Um, we're definitely keeping that in mind. We definitely understand that 
uh, our player base has grown up, you know, have spouses, kids, responsibilities, jobs. Definitely keeping that in mind. Very cool. Can run the second uh, window, right? Yeah. Okay. We can once this this round is done. Let's um let's rebuff. Can we mind grabbing that mender on me? There's a third mender? Oh, it's a mana it. weaver, I, I see a soldier. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, a mana weaver. Yeah, he's just zapping. Oh, oh the, the mana, mana weaver. weaver. Okay. Yeah. I was trying to keep him as, but uh, people kept on breaking him. See that's okay. when you have to stand up and start naming naming names. Let's do the let's do the soldier that's beating on combo's face. Unless it was me, in Thanks, which case man. don't worry about it. <laughs> uh -huh. So, uh, out of curiosity, what is the plan for skill acquisition? Am I going to get a level and then instantly those abilities are going to appear in my, my abilities journal? Or am I going to be finding trainers, doing quests? What, what's, how's that going to work? Yeah, that's how it works right now, just for the sake of testing. To make it as easy on the testers as possible to get their new abilities and, and jump right back in. So, um, the, the plan long, longer term is um, for your lower level players up to a certain point. Maybe it's level 10, maybe it's level 20. You're gonna get most of your abilities, the core set of abilities from trainers um, that'll be scattered around the starting area and the first flow zone. But around level 20 or so, you're gonna start um, finding abilities as, uh, next. as drops in dungeons. You're gonna be finding um, special trainers, class trainers in dungeons that uh, you have to find and and interact with to get certain skills um and we were we're i would like to see that starting to trickle in here pretty quickly as a matter of fact i was i was hoping to put a a few drop abilities in for this last um session of uh pre-alpha testing that we just had and just didn't quite have the time to get it in so we're definitely intending on doing that and very close to um getting that in for the players. So, so let me just make sure I understand this correctly. You're saying that I could live out my dream of finding an old man on the top of a snowy mountain and learning an, a, an ancient skill from him? Not just a could, Co. Yeah, it's a should. It is a <laughs> you will. <laughs> that is awesome. Right. Yeah, okay. and there's, there's no more of just sitting in one place and, and power leveling all the way up. You're going to have to be exploring the world and finding these sages and, and learning not just getting great loot, but learning your abilities and things like that. Excellent, excellent. So it's not just going to be like when you come up on a, on a level 22 rogue or a level 40 rogue. It's not just going to be like every rogue's going to be the same. It's like how traveled is that rogue? Has he gone around the world and met all his trainers and gotten all his skills and gotten his drops? I mean, a, two level 40 rogues side by side could be completely different depending on how much time they've spent on developing Absolutely. themselves. And the third guy who didn't bother to adventure around the world is going to be at a, a significant disadvantage. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> that is so cool. On that note, uh, interesting, interesting question. So with that much versatility, are you guys going to make it so other players can view what a player has accomplished without having to ask mm. them? That's a cool idea. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be some form of inspect. I think, you know, some players want to be more private. Maybe they can toggle that off. But uh, inspecting another player, seeing what, what kind of gear he has, what kind of abilities, where they're at, um, I think that'll be part of the game, yeah. Very cool. The, the question is sort of phrased in a way, like, I don't know if they're necessarily talking maybe like an achievement system or something like that. I don't think that's been spec'd out yet. Um, again still in development so but uh, it's, it's a cool idea very cool the main thrust of it is you need to move around the world explore and learn about the the different areas and uh, not just stay in one spot
Are we done with the buffs? We are done Whoa. with the buffs. There's Madaki porting around town. <laughs> he's one of he's our GM for this session for the uh for the players. Oh cool. Appreciate your help, Madaki. <laughs> um, in the interest of time, should I just keep on going straight down the hall instead of doing these uh, side rooms? Yep. Uh, may end up getting the side room ads anyway, but. <laughs> it might not be a bad idea, though, to pull back a little bit and not fight right in front of the. Yeah, I was trying, but again, as a caster, I have to LOS them if I want to. Pantheon come to console. I don't believe there's plans for that right now, guys. Not right now, no. Yeah. It, it, if if it happens, it would be after launch. We really want to focus uh, on the PC right now. Understandably. Uh, run the soldier. Uh, oh, sorry, on the mana weaver. Mana weaver. Uh, Ravelix, you know, to answer your question, we talked about a little bit about this at the beginning. Uh, our, our party is a level 14 uh, kind of default party. We're not really well geared. Uh, nobody in the in the party is super powerful or anything like that. That's one of the reasons we've been wiping is because this is, you know, this is actually a challenge to this party for sure. Just thought I'd throw it out there too. If any of our viewers out there are uh, going to be at PAX East, we will be showing the game there. Um, you'll get a chance to demo it yourself too, like giving a little bit of hands-on time. But the space for that is very, very limited. So if you are coming to PAX East, want to check it out, I advise getting to the booth as soon as you can and signing up. We'll have sign up a sign-up sheet to get a slot to try it out for a bit. There's an upgrade for your uh, weapon there, Ben. Cool. Yeah, I'm really bad at looting. I just, I just, I just don't loot. Hmm. Just terrible. But I, I guess I'm grouping with the wrong people typically because I'm used to not getting any loot, <laughs> so I don't even bother <laughs> trying anymore. <laughs> you got mad. Right, soldier. We're gonna start getting repops down here, so it might be a good idea for us to move up just to about this uh, column. It's done. Oh, I just <laughs> I just GM shouted and said GM say it say it. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I see a lot of very helpful people answering people in chat for some of the, the more basic questions being asked. Big thank you guys on that. And on that note, if you ask a question in chat, please keep reading chats because there's a good chance if I don't answer you, someone in chat will. Also, shout out to the Pantheon community. I see a lot of new faces in here from uh, the Pantheon forums, Reddit, and website. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Yeah, much appreciated. You guys have a very, very helpful community. Yes, yeah, we do. Our community's pretty amazing. Yeah, they've been, they've been unbelievable. Can't say enough about our pre-alpha testers. They've just been incredible. Here, here you go, Ben. Come get some, uh, which, get some uh, gear, oh, please, for the sake of all of us. What, what, where? Right in front of me. Which one? I can't loot it. Oh, I'm attacking, that's why. I'll While turn attack that, off. Uh, Krylon, Oops. yes, all of this will be available later on my YouTube, and I think the Pantheon devs will also well, have ben. a copy as well. Oh. I already have oh, the, right uh, actually, no, oh. I don't have the chest card. Soldier oh, on that amulet, that's insane. I'll let uh, Brad tank for a while while I put on my new Uber loot. <laughs> oh boy. What's Line the uh, what stats on your main hand dagger, Kev? 
Uh, my main hand is currently a giant spider fang, one to seven, two point five DPS. Okay. The the wraith right behind you. There's a uh, dagger on that. Oh, oh, that. Oh, 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 walking. Oh, oh, man. Ooh, walking. Poor guy. He's out of his element down here. I'm, I'm taking the earring too. <laughs> That's a nice one. We've got a mender here. I'm gonna mess him. Okay. Wait, what is this? Scenery? I guess it's good. Oh, can we equip in combat? Yeah. I, I, I don't know if, if rogues can wear that. Oh, okay. What do you want us on next, uh, Kim? The mender or the worker? Uh, yeah, probably do the mender. Okay. Uh, is there a way yet to see? I don't think we need to get on mender? the worker. Okay, I'm on the mender. already. Uh... Okay. Yeah, the soldiers aren't too bad. What did you oh, ask, Co? Uh, what was your question? Uh, I was wondering if there was a way to see who can use an item yet, like what classes and races. It's coming. It's probably cool. going to be in the next patch. Perfect. But not yet. If you try to equip it, it should give you a message that says your, your class can't equip it. Yep, but Ethereal it Stud doesn't. cannot be used on Rome. I see that on the bottom left. Cool. Uh, in that case, would anyone like this stud? I'll, how do I link in chat? Check. Type out all the stats. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> gotcha. That's coming soon as well. Man, I remember those old days where you literally, you had to do that. You had to like type out all the stats of your stuff. Oh, hell Lincoln, yeah. Lincoln didn't come in until Lucklin. Nope. In fact, I remember spending my days in North Freeport uh, basically typing out entire blocks in notepad of like an item and then a parenthesis all the stats, then selling this item, item all the stats. Yeah. Oh my lord. I had pages and pages in notepad of saved item stats for that exact reason. Uh, yeah, I remember that. Gosh, yeah, we did the same thing. <laughs> Especially when you did like a plane of hate raid or something, and it's just like. Another ad. Okay, taking out this soldier first. Leave the mana weaver to the uh, CC. Yeah, Garmanis, I know a lot a lot of servers use the uh, the commons tunnel, but on my server I was on uh, Vishan and then Saren and we use North Freeport. Yeah, every see, every I, other server had their own flavor. <laughs> I was on, yeah, I was on Tunari and we did uh ours was um G mm hmm Yep. Or G Bay, as we started calling it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> when I actually I recently played EQ on a progression server on Agnar and they used commons and uh, they used another weird zone. What was it? Um, I don't remember. But uh, I think there were some in row too. It was, it was weird. But anyway, uh, it's not Dave says. Is there an AA system in consideration for more diversity? Well, it's not Dave. Earlier they were talking about how you know you have to go around the the place and get your skills and sometimes loot them and find them. Uh, I AA specifically came in expansions and other games, so I I don't know if a game would actually start with that system. Hey, grats. Grats, drop it. That being said, guys, do you have anything planned like that, like a skill point style AA system on release? No, not on release. Yeah, figure as much. But I to to go back to what Chat said though, I'm I'm also a huge fan of the AA systems, so maybe we'll see that in the first Pantheon expansion. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe. Ways off. Uh, One Punch Mac AA equals alternate advancement. A, uh, alternate advancement was a way to where if your character was max level, you had all the gear that you would want. You would instead of leveling up, you'd get AA points, and then you'd spend them in like a wall of potential skills. It was all AA means is alternate advancement. It's a different way to progress your character. Um, lots of different games have used lots of different systems to do that, but that's all it means. It's basically yeah, progression actually, past max. I actually remember being in the meeting where we kind of came up with that, and it was when we went from 50 to 60, but it was really slow each level, and we said, you know, they, we need the players to be able to focus on other things while they're going through these long levels. So that's the alternate part of it, but um, I think it's it, it's evolved since then into just another way to uh, work progress your character, so uh, we're definitely open to it. Just for some context there, um, Brad was a producer for Forever Quest and uh, one of its co creators. Yep, yep.
There's a couple of hand-to-hand -hand weapons here, but we don't have a monk in this group, do we? No, but I'm I'm I am tempted to jump on my monk and let Zoe switch over to heals. That'd be that'd be kind of cool because the monk's got some pretty sweet visuals as well as being an effective care, uh, class. So are we going to be okay with CC then? Well, I guess we have Ko. Ko could do some. Yeah, I just think I just think higher DPS. Yeah. Overall would. Yeah, would let's mix it up a little bit. That's a good idea. Go. We got a mob. We'll hoard, hold the, Why don't you guys we'll just use GM kill for now while we make yeah. the switch? Just uh, for the record, any any type of reliance on Ko is risky. Let's just go ahead and throw that out, <laughs> out early. <laughs> oh, oh, I think I just crashed. Yeah, I just crashed too. Wow. Okay. I'm here, taking all Absolutely. the gear. <laughs> We're having a dance party back in here. Where are you guys at? <laughs> Let's ninja all these corpses go. <laughs> Too many GM kills. Oh, human meat. Oh, oh, oh. Fist trap, so nice. Oh, hey, by the way, uh, Ben, just a random question. How long were you thinking of going today? Um... We should probably try and wrap it up within, uh, what time is it now? When did we start? <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we started about an hour and 40 minutes ago. Yeah, we should, we should probably wrap it up fairly soon. Maybe another 20 minutes, 20, 30 yeah, minutes. Yeah, that went by fast. Yeah, it did. <laughs> so about three more hours? Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Great. What we initially wanted to do is we wanted to get to a certain boss, kill it, and then come back up and do another boss. I just don't see us having time for that today. I can well, clear a little way here. Why don't you do that? Yeah. Yeah, um, not a bad idea, and we'll get some different different classes in. And this next section is going to be be uh, <laughs> nasty, <laughs> a little bit punishing. Ding fifteen. All right, I'm ready to go. Rats, man. Uh, can you please elaborate a little on how class progression will work in general? Would there be subclasses? Does anyone want to take that? Uh, no, there will not be subclasses. Um, they want how class progression will will be in general. Is that was was that? Yeah, it it sounds like uh, they may have been talking a little bit more about. Uh, and as as Res, I'm not sure if you were there earlier when they were talking about how classes, well, every class will kind of need to go out and find trainers and get some of their abilities from drops and maybe even do quests and stuff for them. But the the real progression in a game like this is not necessarily like down a tech tree. This isn't this isn't like a like a talent tree style game where you like have a bunch of little splits and you pick either or. This one's more about your progression through the game world. So how many and, different trainers have you gone and found, and how many right, drops have you gotten? The choices you've made. I mean, it, it's not. It's not traditional subclassing, but you. But based on the choices you make, um, you are kind of individualizing your character. So it's kind of a soft choice-based, decision-based uh, way that you want to progress your character. I would just to clarify on that. I think it would be good to to say it's not it's not decision-based in the sense that you know you have a choice between this ability or this ability or between having this skill or having this skill, at least not in general. What, what we're saying more is to get all of your abilities, to have a full arsenal of abilities, some of that will require you to discover um, where those abilities, if, if it's a scroll, let's say, for a wizard, you, you would have to find where that scroll um, drops, where it would be found. Um, if it's a skill, you'd have to find you know, where the certain trainer is and then be able to, you know, whatever they would require you to do uh, to be deemed worthy to learn what that skill is. That's more what we mean. It, it, not as much you're going to have to decide between, you know, one, two, and three, and you can only choose one. Right. And that also ties into acclimatization and other things as well, right? As, as far as... Um, Going to different areas and... And, yeah, uh, it, it it does. Uh, so your your climates uh, it's going to be more about um, acclimation. Uh, you know, the being able to resist exposure to the elements, whereas um, and finding you know certain key items and and things that will help you do that. Whereas atmospheres, that unnatural phenomenon I was talking about earlier, 
Um, most of those will require you to find certain specific artifacts in the world uh, to be able to mitigate or um, traverse through that particular effect. So the darkness, let's say, might be, you know, that we were talking about earlier, it might be a special ring that is a, a unique kind of light source. That's the only way you can actually see in an area like that. So you would have to, to spend the time finding that ring, perhaps finding it for a few people in, in your group or in your guild to be able to move effectively through that area. Things like that. Cool. Very cool. Yes, to answer the real question on everyone's mind, yes, there will be fishing in the game. <laughs> you might even have a fishing skill in your boat. Yeah, though. I was just going to say. <laughs> oh, oh, I do. Oh, I do. <laughs> I've, been, I've been fishing at Aerodune for the last 30 minutes. <laughs> it doesn't do anything, but <laughs> I'm going to keep trying. <laughs> you, do, you never know. It might stick one of these things. <laughs> I just don't have the right bait. <laughs> Get some better bait. Uh, for anyone wondering in chat what we're doing right now, we're actually switching out our enchanter for a monk class. And also, to answer an earlier question, right now we have Mikhail as a dwarf warrior, Erudun as a human warrior, who is uh, would be dual wielding, but he's carrying a torch so we can see a little bit easier. We have Convo as a wizard, right, Convo, I believe? Yeah, Convo is the That's wizard. That's correct, yep. And uh, Zoe is an enchanter currently, but she's switching over to monk right now. Will the game be she's, free? She's no. actually sw switching over to the uh, cleric. Cleric, oh, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. She's switching to Cleric. Okay, great. All right. Someone back in here. And then Joppa is coming back as the monk, right? Yeah, great. Oh, did I invite you while you were zoning? Oh, good. Uh, Suplup, that's a great question, but I think it may be a little long for now. And uh, Beshock, their business model, I believe, is is purchase the game and then monthly subscription fee. And let me know if that's changed at all, guys. Yeah, we, we're going to have, um, well, we hope to have a trial period. So it'll be the first few levels where you can play free and then... Uh, and you need to purchase the game and subscribe after that. You got spiders Creeper, on us. Creepers. Yep. I didn't even see it. That's why they call them creepers. Yeah, man. Hold on just one second. I'm gonna... My hotkeys here. Uh, suffocate? No, I don't believe that skills go under any kind of level up process. I think it's a once you get a skill, that's the skill. And please, guys, fill in any details there. Uh, they go up through use. Oh, they do. Well, uh, I think he's talking about the. I should have said abilities. Excuse me. Oh, gotcha. So the, the, the exact answer? question. The exact question was. Uh, and I should move here. Will skills, and in this case, I believe it means abilities, like backstab, will they also level up the more you use them? The skills that support the abilities, that the, that the abilities are associated with, will go up, um, so, you know, to a certain extent every time you level. So that's going to help you indirectly. But then the skill themselves, like, I'm never going to get backstab two, backstab three. No. No, a, a skill will either um, exist with you from the time you get it until the end. And so backstab, for example, would be a skill that stays with you. It doesn't evolve. It doesn't change. It just scales up in terms of its effectiveness, the damage you deal with it. Whereas um, other abilities like, let's say, the wizard's shelter of frail energies that they get at level one, that's like a, a line of abilities that that you actually do get replacement abilities along the way in the same line. So shelter of frail energies at level one becomes shelter of weak energies at level eight, shelter of energy at level uh, you know, 12, shelter of strong energies. So it, we have kind of both. Um, that may be a poor example because it's pretty, pretty flat, but there are, uh, you can think of it in terms of like lines. Certain, certain abilities are, along to certain lines that will evolve 
in, in power, potency, effect um, as you level up. So yeah, I mean, the answer is kind of yes, um, but not in a ranking way. We're not going to have Fireball rank 1, 2, 10, that kind of thing. Cool, great. Man, this guy, yeah, so, okay, does he have so a damage we, shield on? Yeah, so, so what you guys are experiencing here is the damage shield. Yep. This is what gave our. our I'm sitting here just like issue. either this is the most wicked dot I've ever had. Or... Yeah, sorry now, guys, now I ran out of get, damage. Uh, okay, I was gonna say you don't get damage by healing. <laughs> so I'm assuming, uh, do we have a class with us that can dispel that? No. No, we don't. So the only real strategy, the only effective strategy, is to uh, be very selective about the damage you deal. Um, that means uh, <laughs> most effective strategy we found is to not auto attack, um, but to limit yourself to your most damaging oh, okay. uh, single shot abilities. So backstab would be one. I've got a few on my monk, um, and then uh, direct damage nukes. Okay, cool. What's the warrior supposed to do? Just kick him? Oh Jesus! Train at uh, <laughs> that's me kidding oh. here. <laughs> Let me get you, let me try to get you out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Uh, okay, oh, here's, we here's where it gets funny. I'm still aggroed. <laughs> mm. Oh my goodness, the train oh, at the zone. Can I hide or oh sneak or something to break aggro? <laughs> yes. Nope, I can't. No, oh no. Gosh. I think this is it for our little adventure here. <laughs> I've never seen anything quite like that. Yeah, I am I'm very much still red screened right now. Uh, it's gonna get ugly here. Let me see if I just rocks. I just turned aggro okay. off for Cole. Okay, cool. Are you still red screened? Oh, very much so. Yes. Is your auto attack running or no? No, it is not. <laughs> <laughs> I can do a quick relog or something if that helps. Oh, there we go. That fixed it. Great. Okay. That did it. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Time to sacrifice Ko for the greater good. Oh, that's rude, chat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what was the strategy here? Uh, summon me back, please. So just to say again, the Blaspheme uh, Wraiths have a damage shield that's pretty pretty significant and so auto attack is suicide um, melee classes want to limit themselves to their most damaging single shot abilities so that would be backstab for example um, single target direct damage nukes um, avoid damage over time spells damage over time um, abilities co like you're you're leaking in toxic wound any basically anytime the mob takes damage you're going to take damage so Oh wow! The most damaging single target, single shot abilities is what we want to try and stick to. Cool. I'll just stick to taunt. <laughs> taunt and maybe throw some angering blows in there. Yeah. Are are there plans to add dispel like spells for these situations? Yes, there levels? will be cool. cleanse, dispel, and cleanse type spells that are more general. Um, we do have cures in, and there are a couple of situations where those are mandatory um, for a successful uh, kill, but. We do not have the uh, the magic based general purpose cleanse type. Do you think you can split these, Joppa? I don't think I have feigned up yet. By the way, twenty five people total in the in the zone, including us. And they're all dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, FD is what sixteen or seventeen. It's sixteen right now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, if you guys are ready, I'll snag these guys again. Are we ready? Let's do it. Just gotta wait for that um, rumor to go back. Yeah. Oh, monk garb is looking great. Hey, this time around, I'll just try to root the the mob on the right. Oh, that's a good idea. All right, here we go. There goes nothing. And he, he resisted. Sick. There we go. 
All right, splitting him out. Remember, turn auto attack off. Uh, does this guy have a damage shield? I'm not. I'm not seeing any damage. I think yeah. we're good. It's an ability, so he'll cast it on himself. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So careful with the dots then. Yep, there it is. Okay. Splitting them out again. Trying to. Oh, it looks like it got aggro Joppa. I'm gonna go down. So he's out of mana. Yeah, it's a little tough without an enchanter. So you can just see how changing our group composition really changed the, the dynamics. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and if we were a group at this level, um, we would not be trying to push into this room at this point. That would be... Suicide? Obviously, that it would be a foolish <laughs> decision. We would probably be hanging back in the hall we were just in for a while, get a couple of levels. Gear well, up with those no rent weapons and then to try. I'll tell you this if, if we were a regular group and we tried that, we would have wiped and then working our way back down, I would have said, Yeah, no, let's not do that again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, we just could get back to our corpses. No, what's kind of funny is you know, this is this is kind of exactly how this should go. I mean, this this type of game isn't easy. You know, I mean, I personally, this is the first time I've played this class. You know, we're playing like this is this is kind of I kind of expected this to go exactly like this today, <laughs> to mm -hmm. be honest. Yeah. yeah, well, that's that's the point, right? I mean, we don't we're, we're not trying to to script this in a way that's like you know here we start here and move all the way here and it totally trivializes the fact that there are actual level ranges and the mobs do increase in difficulty quite a bit. Group makeup is important. And uh, we're just not high enough level to to make it through here, so you're going to see a lot more dying if we continue to try to do it. Um, and that, and we were able to see, you know, uh, lots of testers responding to that. Um, it was, I think, the average level of tester that was able to move through this area um, was about level 16 or 17 in a, in a full group. Maybe a few lower level than that in the group, but yeah, we're still two or three levels low. Um, and, and we, we have two, all, we got two warriors like, in the group. And we have default yeah, gear. Paying the price. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. You know, we haven't been out getting good gear off name mobs or anything like that. We're all in pretty much as basic as it gets. So, yeah. Code, did you release? Uh, I released and then was summoned back. Oh, I don't see you. I'm right next to oh, you me. right now, actually. Right in front of you. Hmm. Must be anymore. bugged. Me, I must be bugged. Cool, cool. So, okay, okay, we're uh, yeah. quickly running out of time. Was there something that we wanted to see before we wrap up? Yeah, what's the finale, Chris? I think we should try Arathna if she's up. Yeah, I think that would be cool if we went to the zone and maybe turned Agar off and ran to her, Chris. Yeah, let's do that. Or just one. have somebody go there and summon us probably would be smoother. Well, if we run with Agro off, then we can see it. Right, right, you can see the zone. It's yeah. Okay. Cool. And cool. I think I think Ko's Agro is still off from last time I did it, so we should be we should be all right. Cool. You guys all have GM commands to turn it off? Yep. Okay. Um, I can't see half the group, so I'm just going to follow. I don't know. The only person I can see is Aradun right now. Maybe, sure. maybe if you uh, zone real quick, Ben. Oh, you know what? No, we're good. We're good now. All right. I guess everyone just check to see if their aggro is on or off, and if you're not uh, turning someone else's aggro on or off. Let's go. Yeah. Go with us here at the, at the starting point. I'm right up with you guys right now. Okay. Come. All right, Joppa, following you. Cheat mode activated. <laughs> Joppa mode on. Hopefully, my aggro off stuck. <laughs> yeah, we'll, and we'll find, we'll find out, out soon. If not. <laughs> yeah, we'll find out. What did Joppa turn into? Joppa uh, hung up his hanger, uh, hammer for a monk. So he is actually a monk right now. And then our cleric duties were taken over by Zoe. Ooh, be careful not to train this group. So the people on this uh, on this realm right now are really big fans of yours, Ko, because, because we're doing this stream at least. We've kept servers up for longer than they normally are, so they're pretty happy with that. And it's my pleasure. 
<laughs> and they're going to be immortalized in the in the stream. Yeah, it's awesome. Forever. That's right. Oh, quick random question. Uh, can you consent and allow other people to loot your corpse? Consent to drag, yes, but not to loot yet. Cool. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, Nadaki. <laughs> Man, this level looks really cool. Man, this room would be a pain in a good way. <laughs> Uh-oh. All right, so she's I think I was up. admiring the atmosphere and may have lost you guys. Oh, wait, I got this handy little pointer thing up here in the top left. Did I go this way? Yeah, there we go. Cool. I'm not used to having those little arrows in the party menu in the top left. That's great. <laughs> yeah, we got the arrows and the little class, class icons and... So we're gonna do, try something kind of interesting here, okay? I want you to follow me. The uh, Harathna is not up. She, if she was, she'd be in this little kind of uh, area back in here. But we're gonna climb up. Ah, he's a little climbing. Cool. So for people that have seen it just for the first time, right then, uh, how exactly is climbing gonna work? Well, we've shown, I, I'm pretty sure, in our stream, when we streamed Amber Fate, the, uh, mm -hmm. the Frozen Dungeon, that we showed off quite a bit of climbing in there. But it, it's it's really just to provide a sense of vertical progression. Um, we're used to, you know, moving through uh, dungeons so semi-linearly and on pretty horizontal uh, progression plane with maybe, you know, kind of going down a little bit or up some ramps but with with climbing specifically it, it allows us to get almost purely vertical progression elements um which is just a lot of fun it's a lot of fun level design wise it's really interesting when you start uh considering kind of the layers of of social interaction that happen when you're less of a, of a distance away from someone horizontally and more vertically and can look down and look up and see you know things going on so um it's just something we're we're exploring, really, at this point. Uh, some of it will be like what we just saw, just little little points where you can climb up and move up. Some of it will be massive, you know, um, climbs up into the the far <laughs> far sky uh, kind of thing, with where a fall would be catastrophic. So, well, um, when you put that kind of height together with a climate like wind shear, one of our extreme climate types. Um, then you, you have a recipe for some interesting uh, interesting encounters, interesting level design. Very cool. All right. So anything else? I brought us up here because she's not up, and so for the uh, end here, I was going to just spawn her up in this little section. Oh, okay, cool. And I'm uh, put my sword back on. Aggro her from below. Let's make sure aggro is off, just so that she can spawn in, and we can kind of get ourselves mentally prepared before we engage. <laughs> Have a di have a dialogue with her before we attack. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is a <laughs> this is a very challenging fight, so I don't expect us to survive, but it'll be it'll be fun. Well, judging that's, from our track record so far today, I think you might be pretty <laughs> spot on with that. Uh, my right. favorite my favorite finale is a wipe. So there you go. <laughs> Couldn't agree right. more. Spawning her now. Oh. Oh. Oh, it's a spot. We didn't. Oh, no, I didn't agree to a big spider. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Are we ready? Yep. I'm going to spin her around. Let's do it. There. I'll be back here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'll be heading towards the zone line. Here we go. Oh, jeez. I got tainted. I got tainted again. Oh lord. Is that a persistent AoE going on? Oh, why she has she has, does have a few AO, AEs on her. Just yeah. web web me and Ben pretty good. shut yeah. us down. I am getting destroyed. I'm gonna back out a little bit. Oh my god, this mob is no joke. I think I'm dead. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Damn. She is definitely beatable. We've had we've had quite a few groups in the last day or so beat her. Oh That's yeah. Oh, it's been fantastic. Wow. 
the uh, the ingenuity of, of of our testers has been really impressive. Just seeing them work out how to do it, you know. Um, Immersion behavior. It's been really fun. Kudos to to all of our testers. Uh, just to say it again, you guys have just done an amazing job with this with this zone, especially with these more difficult encounters. Um, sticking with it, being patient, trying different things, and uh, it's been really fun. It's been one of the most satisfying, most rewarding parts of this process is watching, it's being able to watch you guys throw yourselves at it, and uh, and the the high quality feedback that we've been able to to read on the forums, um, the pre-alpha forums, uh, it's, it's just been it's just been really really wonderful and really really helpful. So kudos to all of you. I gotta say the the difficulty I've witnessed today is very promising. You know, if you if you have a really slow combat system and it's really easy, that is when most people are like, "Wow, this is boring." But when you have a slow combat system but still maintain that level of difficulty, we saw today, that is that is that is very promising. That is very promising. Are you at the zone line, Co? Yes, These guys are okay. Good. Oh yes. <laughs> oh, I I was the first to go. <laughs> I, I died. In, uh, yeah. That little D.O.T. man just shredded me like a wet paper towel. Whew. I'm looking forward to getting back there one day and killing that spider. Drop some good stuff. Whoa. So if you like what you saw today, head on over to PantheonMMO.com. We are largely... Uh, this project is largely funded by crowdfunding, so there's lots of available pledge packages there. If you want to see more Pantheon, we, are, we will be at PAX East on uh, starting April 5th. Um, and also, Jim Lee is going to be uh, streaming on Tuesday at 8 o'clock Pacific Time on his, his channel. So lots of ways to check out Pantheon. Uh, you said Jim Lee will be streaming this? Yes, Tuesday. And is he twitch.tv slash Jim Lee? You got it, yeah. Awesome. There you go. Perfect. Well, very cool, guys. Before we break here, were there any final thoughts anyone would like to pass along? I just said them. <laughs> Perfect. Well, then we're good to go. Well, guys, this has been another look at Pantheon. Uh, it has been a huge amount of fun. I want to thank all of you guys for being here. Really appreciate all the great questions and uh, all the great feedback today. A huge shout out again to uh, all of our friends over at Visionary Realms. Brad McQuaid, Chris Perkins, Kim Morrison, Tim Wathen, and the one and only Benjamin Dean, guys. Thank you so much for being here today. Really appreciate your time. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for having us, thank man. Thank you, Co. It was a lot of thank fun. Thank you. Awesome. On that note, see you guys later. Take care. Adios. Fantastic. Well, guys, that is going to be it from me today. I really hope you enjoyed this. I can tell you right now that I'm already looking forward to the next one. By the way, for some people asking about bards, um, I, I think the class stuff has, they, they kind of address that pretty often in the forums, which, by the way, a lot of great questions today. A lot of those questions are answered in the forums. They have a very active forum over at Pantheon MMO. Lots of FAQs, lots of answers about classes, what they have coming, uh, how to pledge if you're interested in that. All that good stuff is over at PantheonMMO.com. So if your question did not get answered today, make sure to check them out and, uh, and you can get going there. On that note, that is going to be it from me. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. I will definitely let you know the next time we'll do this. As, as I've told the Pantheon guys, I'm a huge fan of this project. I will basically do these types of streams anytime they want. I love checking out the new content, love seeing the progress, because I have to say, every single time we've streamed Pantheon, every time has been significantly more progress than the last. So, man, if they keep this up, this is going to turn into something pretty special. I'm really looking forward to this one. So anyway, guys, on that note, uh, I am out of here for now. I will see you guys tomorrow morning for more Yakuza. We're going to do more Yakuza tomorrow morning, uh, more Majima and main story. And uh, then we'll probably do something different in the afternoon. Then on uh, Tuesday, we've got Sea of Thieves as well as other stuff. So And then we've got a whole bunch of games coming. So anyway, if you haven't yet, hope you hit that follow button. And again, thank you so much for spending some of your time here. I'm going to go ahead and run my outros. I will see all of you tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day. And thanks for being here. Bye-bye.